we welcome you all for this particular session that is characteristics of a good program. It's very essential for everyone to know what are the different characteristics of a good program. As a beginner, to start with programming in C++ or any language, it's better to know the characteristics for writing best programs. A computer program is a sequence of or a set of instructions in a programming language for a computer to execute. The program should be written uh, in such a way that it is easier to understand and implement so that it can provide us with the desired output. So the following are the characteristics of a good computer program. What are those? First one is portability, maintainability, efficient, reliable, mission independence, cost effectiveness, flexible. See, there are some best practices we should always have in mind. Meaningful identifiers, consistent indentation, limit line length, file and folder structure, comments. So what is this meaningful identifier? See, identifiers or names for entities in a program, such as variables, arrays, functions, data definitions, labels, so on. So an identifier name should indicate the meaning and usage of the element in the code. For example, int amount, double total balance. So it will give the meaningful name to an identifier. This one, everyone should keep in mind. Next, let us come to the consistent indentation. See, indentation is the better way to represent the relationship between control flow constructs such as selection statements or loops like that. And the code contained within and outside of them is important. So what I want to, what I want to say is it's better way to represent the relationship between control flow constructs like selection statements or loops. And the code contained within and outside of them. So developers use indentation to understand the structure of their, pro, uh, of their programs for human readers. So here you can understand, see the readability is very, very important for anyone. If some conditions, so print, any stranger, if, if they look at the code, they will, even they can follow, this is called indentation. Then I spoke about limit line length. See, limit line length means the long queues are very, very difficult to read. It is decent to practice to try not to write long lines of code. So coming to files and folder structure. This is actually, we should avoid writing all of our code in one or two files. That won't break your application, but it would be a bad experience to read or debug, troubleshoot, and maintain your application in the future. So structuring programming files in folders will make the code a lot more readable, maintainable, easier, and also it's, it will be very, very easier to locate and organize the files and versions. So it's very important to segregate or to organize the files and whole structure, folder structure. So coming to comments. See, comments are very, very important. Comments are invaluable in helping the other person who reads your code, figure out uh, what you were thinking when you wrote it. Even when that person is yourself a month from now, so they, you will come to know that, you will understand. So it is good practice to write comments for every function, class, and property in your code. Uh, for example, I have given here, see, there are two types of comments. One is single line comment, other one is multi-line comment. Single line comment is 
that particular line will be commented and it will be ignored by the compiler while execution or while compiling. But multi-line comment is actually you at a time you can comment the more than one line. So that will give uh, the programmer information and also it will explain what the code is doing. So I told you that uh, uh, so many characteristics. So let us discuss the characteristics one by one. So first coming to portability. See, a program should be supported by many different computers. The program should compile and run smoothly on different platforms. So because of rapid development in hardware and software, platform change is very common uh, phenomenon these days. So portability is measured by how a software application can be transferred from one computer environment to another without any failure. So a program is said to be more portable if it is easily adopted on different computer systems. So subsequently, if a program is developed only for a particular platform, its life expectancy is seriously compromised. So you, are, you should not do that. You, you can never compromise with the, uh, what um, that programmer, uh, whatever he write the code or whatever the program is developed by a developer should never be compromised with portability. Next, uh, coming to maintainability. See, it is the process of fixing uh, program errors and improvising, uh, improving the program. If a program is easy to read and understand, then its maintenance will be easier. It should also prevent unwanted work so that the maintenance cost in the future will be low. It should, al uh, it should also have uh, quality to easily meet new requirements. That is very important. A maintainable software allows us to fix bugs quickly and easily and also improve usability and performance and also to add new features and also to make changes to support multiple platforms and so on. So that's why um, it should be very, very, it should be easily readable and understandable. Uh, next one is efficient. See, program is said to be more efficient if it takes the least amount of memory and processing time. And uh, it is easily converted to machine language. So the algorithm, what you develop should be more effective. Every program needs certain processing time and memory to process the instruction and data. So the program efficiency is also high if it has a high speed during runtime execution of the program. So it should, uh, uh, to make it, uh, as I've told you that it should take least amount of memory and least amount of time. How can you avoid, how can you overcome this? That you should uh, better to avoid loops. So whenever it's possible, the performance, otherwise the performance, you have to compromise with the performance. To always avoid looping so that you can develop a formula instead of looping if possible. Then, and also the lines, um, because if you have less lines of codes, always you have to uh, reduce the lines of code. Effectively, you should write a program so that number of lines will be reduced or less so that it takes, it executes very fast and system becomes faster. Then comes reliable. See, the user's actual needs will change from time to time. So the program is said to be reliable if it works smoothly in every version. It is measured as reliable if it gives the same performance in all simple to complex condition. Okay, even 100 the time of execution, you have to get the same output with different inputs. Okay, this is called reliability. The system is so, the program is so reliable. So next comes machine independent. Program should uh, be machine independent, of course. So program written on one system should be able to execute on many different types of computers without any changes. It is not system specific and provides more flexibility. 
For example, an example of this would be Java. Okay, Java is machine independent. Next comes cost effectiveness. Uh, cost effectiveness, of course, is the key to measure the program quality. Cost must be measured over the life of the program and also must include both cost and uh, uh, human cost of producing these programs. Means it should be bug free. Okay, so you should avoid timing fixing errors uh, because much time will not be given or uh, you cannot get much time. You cannot dedicate your precious time on latest versions working. That's why uh, avoid, always you have to write a code which is bug free so that you will get the much time on latest or to work on latest versions so that the system or program becomes cost effective. Next comes flexible. The program should be written in such a way that uh, it allows one to add new features without changing the existing module. The majority of the projects are developed for a specific period. So, and they require modifications from time to time. It should always be ready to meet new requirements. So highly flexible software is always ready for a new world of possibilities. So next, uh, uh, to talk about uh, different type, after uh, the project, project is developed, it will go to the next uh, section that is uh, testing, software testing. So what is software testing? See, it is the process of finding errors in a product, whether it be a mobile or web application, anything. So errors include bugs in the code, missing requirements, glitches, and many more. So software testing can also determine whether the outcome when engaging with the application differs from uh, the expectation. Uh, so while testing should ideally be done at every stage of development. Testing is ultimately the final step before the application is released to production. So it is important for software testers to utilize both manual and automated testing to ensure the final product is the best it can be. So when it comes to software testing, there are three types of uh, personals that uh, will mainly focus on testing within an organization. So there are many, uh, uh, apart from that, there are many different types of, see, you have to know that uh, types of personas. I think the uh, at this moment, to know different types of testing is uh, good. So there are many different types of software tests, each with specific objectives and strategies. So first one is acceptance testing. Acceptance testing, uh, verifying whether the whole system the whatever the product is developed by a developer works as intended. That is called acceptance testing. Next comes integration testing. So integration testing tells that or ensures that software components or functions operate together because each one, one product will be worked by many people. So each individual will work on different modules. So all modules at a time should work together, should operate perfectly, or it should ensure it's working up to the mark or as expected. That is called integration testing. Next comes unit testing. See, validating that each software unit performs as expected is called unit testing. So a unit is the, what do you mean by a unit then? A unit is the smallest testable component of an application because the application is a huge. That's why in that application, there will be many units amongst many, a one unit is the smallest testable component of an application. Next comes functional testing. Checking uh, functions by emulating uh, business scenarios, based on functional requirements like that. So uh, in this uh, functional testing, black box testing, uh, that is very common uh, way to verify functions. That is black box testing. 
usually it's that this is a way to verify the functional functions so functional testing so next coming to performance testing performance testing means uh, you to test whether how, how the software performs under different workloads so load testing for example is used to evaluate performance under real life real life load conditions okay that is called performance testing how best it can sustain that load is uh, performance testing the next uh, regression testing uh, regression testing is uh, checking whether new features uh, break or degrade functionality. Uh, sanity testing can be used to verify menus, functions, and commands at the surface level when there is no time for a full regression test. So next coming to stress testing. Testing how much strain the system can take, I mean, can withstand before it fails. That is called stress testing testing so considered to be a type of non-functional testing it is okay next comes uh, to usability testing so coming to usability testing that is validating how well a customer can use a system or web application to complete a task that is called how best the uh, consumer will use okay so to uh, that web, web application or any application to complete a task Next comes security testing. Security testing uh, unveils uh, the vulnerabilities of the system to ensure that the software system and application are free from any threats or risks. So these tests aim to find any potential flaws and weaknesses in the software system that could lead to a loss of data or revenue or reputation for employees or outside the outside of a company like that. So this is about um, the procedure of software testing. So thanks for watching and uh, for more videos can subscribe to our YouTube channel and it's on the screen.